Hi, my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. A dream is a wish your heart makes. And you know what? I have loved Cinderella ever since I was little and I have the honor of making a Cinderella dress for an adorable little girl. So my heart's wish came true. I wanted to make it true to form to the classic Cinderella and also put some of the elements that the park version of Cinderella wears as well. And there is a huge petticoat underneath that makes it fluff out in the most beautiful way. Please enjoy this video. It was so much fun. It was a challenge. There's a lot to it, but it turned out so pretty in the end. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you're ready, I'm ready. Go ahead and get out your glass slippers and pumpkins and footmen. Thank you so much for being here. I bought over five yards of this beautiful, might as well be called Cinderella blue satin. Three yards of light blue silk organza. I happen to find a remnant of light blue knit at Joann's, which is the perfect color for lining the bodice. And finally, this really fun silver sparkle tool and a light blue tool to go over top, which will hopefully help contain the sparkles. I am still sweeping up glitter. I created a basic bodice pattern from measurements with the help of another YouTube channel that I've linked in my description box below, and then made a few modifications to achieve a princess seam front panel complete with her iconic dip at the center waist. I'll need to cut out two of the side front panels and one of the middle front on fold from both the lining and the satin. And I'll cut two of the back pattern piece making sure the sides and the shoulders line up. Starting with the lining, I have doubled over the fabric and pinned the pattern in place. Before I cut it out, I first need to add a half inch seam allowance. Two lining side panels ready to go. Just repeat that same process on the middle front, except cut it out on fold so there's only one piece. Same for the back pieces and your lining bodice is ready to construct. Starting with the front pieces. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, girl. Oh, hi, Roscoe. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Oh, oh, okay. 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 All right. Like I was saying, starting with the front pieces, fold over the side panels on top of the front middle piece with right sides together. And sew both sides, making sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the ends. And here comes a step that I should have waited to do, but I didn't. And I attached the back panels to the sides the same way. You'll see this line of stitching getting seam ripped later. But before that fun comes, repeat this entire process of cutting out the identical pattern pieces from the satin fabric. Attach the satin pieces together the same way, except I definitely recommend using clips rather than pins because pins will leave marks on the fabric. And if following along at home, skip this step. This satiny fabric tends to fray, so be sure to finish the edges with a zigzag stitch or on a serger if you have one. Then iron each seam on the satin towards the back and press the seams open on the lining. Next step is to attach the lining layer at the shoulder seams by facing the two pieces right sides together and the satin layer also at the shoulder seams the same way. Pin or clip in place and sew. Finish off the shoulder seams so that they don't fray and give them a good press. Then face the two layers right sides together, line up all seams, and clip the two layers together in preparation to sew along the entire top. Turn the bodice right side out to determine if you need to do some understitching, which I did. It's an easy step. Just open up the bodice again and fold the seam towards the lining. Clip notches on the curves, then sew very close to the top edge. This should keep the lining from showing on the outside. Moving on to the sleeves. I've doubled over the fabric to make it easier to cut two sleeves at once that are 10 inches by 6 inches wide. You'll need four in total. Then cut two matching layers of the silver sparkle and two of the blue tulle to make a sparkle sleeve sandwich. Layer the silver sparkle over the shiny side of the satin, 
then a layer of the blue tulle, and one more layer of the satin, shiny side down. Clip the sandwich together and sew only the two long sides. Trim down the seam allowance on both sides and turn it right side out. Sew a basting stitch down each side by switching your machine to the longest stitch length possible and do not backstitch at either end. Separate the top thread from the bobbin thread and start pulling on one of them to gather the edges. Then when you curl it around, these make the cutest little sleeve poofs. And the cute time is over. This is when I realized that it's best to attach the sleeves with the back panel unattached at the sides. So my seam ripper got to make its usual appearance. To attach the sleeve poofs, place them where you want them to start with right sides together. Then pull the lining fabric over, also with the right side down. Basically, you're sandwiching the sleeve poof between the two layers. And sew just that one portion. It gets a little tricky because you need to pull it through a small space. Lining definitely complicates everything, but ends up making it look so much more professional in the end. And then you get to repeat that whole process on the other side. Line up the other side again with right sides together. Then pull the lining around to sandwich the other end in between. Clip together, and don't worry, I readjusted those clips because that was a terrible clip job and sew down the other side. And then this side is even more difficult to pull through than the other side, but it's all worth it in the end because it turns out beautiful with all the seams hidden within the lining. Now you can safely remove any of the basting stitches that are showing from the outside. And finally, we can do that step that I was so eager to do before by sewing up the back seam to the side seam. Open up the bodice and line up the two satin sides with right sides together and the two lining sides also with right sides together and sew with a continuous stitch from one end to the other. Turn it right side out and you have a beautiful lined bodice with sleeves. The only step left is a corset back which we'll get to after we make the skirt. Which I'm clearly having a little too much fun playing with the fabric. To make sure the skirt fit the widest part of the petticoat, I made one front piece measuring 20 inches at the top, tapering down to 48 inches on the bottom with a length of 38 inches, and two back panels that started at 10 inches at the top, tapering down to 24 inches at the bottom, also with a length of 38 inches. This was the most math I've had to do in a long time. And since this fabric is fraying like crazy, I first searched all of the raw edges. I'm about to make some massive skirts, judging from my overflowing scrap pile. To make sure the skirt lines up with the dip that we created in the bodice, I have taken off a tapered 2 inch triangle off the top, and have added a basting stitch in that dip for some stability. I've clipped together the two back pieces to the front piece at the sides and attached with a straight stitch. Press open the seams with your iron, then sew two lines of basting stitches along the top of all three joined panels, being careful of the seams and pivoting the needle at the dip in the middle. We need to scrunch up all of this to fit her tiny 22 inch waist. I can't remember the last time my waist was 22 inches. Anyways, just as we did with the sleeve poofs, Separate the two top threads from the two bobbin threads and gently pull on one set until it matches the length of the bodice. The first underskirt layer will be seen from the outside and needs to be attached to the lining layer only. Position it so that the right side of the lining, the side without the seams, is lined up with the inside of the skirt. 
Starting with the center dip, line up the two points and clip them together. Then match up the side seams to make sure they stay in place when sewing. Make sure you zhuzh out the ruffles as you sew over them. When you reach the center, be sure to leave your needle in the fabric so that you can lift the presser foot and pivot the fabric to continue the other side. When finished, this should make the inside of the bodice complete by hiding the seams while still showing the pretty side of the skirt on the outside. One last step for the underskirt is to sew up the back seam. Face the two right sides together, clip in place, and sew leaving about three inches from the top for the corset back. Moving on to the outer skirt. The center of Cinderella's skirt has a couple of folds that I'll attempt to replicate with three box pleats. I measured out the two and the one inch marks on either side of the middle. Then gather the two inch marks and bring them to meet at the point. Clip in place and you have your first box pleat. Repeat that process two more times, one on either side of the middle box pleat. Carefully sew these box pleats in place, making sure you pivot at the center. Iron the tops of the pleats to make them look sharp. I wasn't sure how many pleats I needed, so I cut extra fabric. Now I just need to measure and cut off the excess. Now to attach the fun silk organza. It's very sheer, so I first finished off the top on my serger, then sewed two lines of basting stitches along the top to gather the same way we did before. The middle pleated part came to about eight and a half inches, which means the rest of the skirt needs to be gathered and ungathered to make up the rest of the 22 plus one inch for seam allowance. Flip the pleated part over the organza part with right sides together, clip and sew. I once again finished off the raw edges on my serger because this satin is just fraying like crazy. From arm poofs to hip poofs. I've doubled over the fabric and measured out 12 inches, or really 24 inches, and then down 19 inches. The finished hip poof will be half the circumference of her waist. So after it's gathered and scrunched up, each poof will be 11 inches wide and 18 inches long. Cut three more of these. Layer these the same way we did with the arm poofs. One layer of the satin with the shiny side up, then a silver sparkle layer, a layer of blue tulle, and lastly, one more satin layer with the shiny side down. Clip together, leaving the top open. Now that both hip poofs have been sewn, turn them right side out and check the edges to make sure that everything's sandwiched correctly. When happy with the sandwich, we're going to once again sew two lines of basting stitches so that we can gather the top. A few quick measurements to make sure that it is still the 12 inches. I have some leftover fiber fill from a previous project that I'm going to stuff the poofs to make them poofier, except I went a little overboard and remembered that this is for a little girl who doesn't want two pillows attached to her hips and started taking out some of the stuffing. My dogs were curious and were very disappointed that the stuffing was not treats. Starting at the middle box pleat, I clip one end of the hip poof and continue around to the back, making sure that each side is symmetrical. Attach each hip poof individually. This became a little difficult as I became engulfed in sparkly, hip, poof, poofiness. 
Now that the top skirt is complete with poofs, we just need to attach it to the outer layer of the bodice. With right sides together, line up the skirt and the bodice starting at the point and clip together the two layers, paying particular attention to the seams. Make sure the underskirt is out of the way and sew starting at the point going one direction, then restarting at the point to sew the other direction. After the top layers have been sewn together, you may now remove any basting stitches that might be showing from the outside. To attach the corset back, separate the dress into the two layers, the top layer and the lining layer. I've already begun pinning the first side of the corset. If interested, I have a more in-depth tutorial on how to install a corset back. Be sure to click the upper right corner or check out the link in my description box later. Basically what you do is line up the corset to the outer shell with the loops facing away from the center. Secure that pin. Then bring the lining layer around the top, sandwiching the corset in between. Repin to attach the lining layer on the other side. This corset was particularly stiff and I basically just ended up bending a lot of my pins. Keep pinning down the line. If it's easier, you can also attach the corset one layer at a time rather than sewing both at once. After double checking your work, sew the corset in place. One of these days, I will remember to pin in the right direction. Apparently that day is not today. Clip the bodice around so that you can turn the corset right side out and check your work. So far, it's looking great. I opted to install a corset back because I had a deadline and wanted to make sure it fit. Lining is such a pain, but it really makes it look professional. Sew the other side the same way. Attach it so that the loops are facing away from the center. Then flip the lining around the top and pin all three layers. Go slow because you really want to make sure everything lines up perfectly. After completing the corset, the only step left is to hem the skirt layers. Fold over the hem a half inch and then fold over another half of an inch and sew very close to the edge. Same double fold over for the outer skirt. Boy, this was a fun project. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please enjoy this adorable reveal.